The Western train had just arrived at Redfern Railway Station with a lot of ordinary passengers and one swagman. He was short and stout and bow-legged and freckled and sandy. He had red hair and small twinkling grey eyes. And what go often goes with such things, the expression of a born comedian. He was dressed in a ragged, well-washed print shirt, an old black waistcoat with a calico back, a pair of cloudy moleskins patched at the knees and held up by plaited green hide belt, buckled loosely round his hips, a pair of well-worn fuzzy blutcher boots and a soft felt hat, green with age and with no brim worth mentioning and no crown to speak of. He swung a swag onto the platform, shouldered it, pulled out a billion water bag and then went to a dog box in the brake van. Five minutes later, he appeared on the edge of the cab platform with an anxious looking cattle dog crouching against his legs and one end of the chain in his hand. He eased down the swag against a post, turned his face to the city, tilted his hat forward and scratched the well-developed back of his head with a little finger. He seemed undecided on what track to take. Cab, sir? The swagman turned slowly and regarded the cabbie with a quiet grin. Now, do I look like I want a cab? Well, why not? No harm anyway. I thought you might want a cab. Swaggy scratched his head reflectively. Well, he said, you're the first man that thought of so these ten years. What do I want with a cab? To look where you're going, of course. Do I look knocked up? I didn't say you did. And I didn't say you said I did. Now I've been on the track this five years. I've tramped 2,000 miles since last Christmas and I don't see why I can't tramp the last mile. Do you think my old dog wants a cab? The dog shivered and whimpered. He seemed to want to get away from the crowd. But then, you see, you aren't going to carry that swag through the streets, are you? Said the cabman. Why not? Who stopped me? There ain't no law again it, I believe. But then, you see, it don't look well, you know. Ah, I thought we'd get to it at last. The traveller upended his bluey against his knee, gave it an affectionate pat and straightened himself up and just looked fixedly at the cabman. Now look here, he said sternly and impressively. Can you see anything wrong with that swag of mine? It was a stout, dumpy swag with a red blanket outside, patched with a blue, and at the edge of the blue blanket showing the inner rings at the end. The swag might have been newer, it might have been cleaner, it might have been hooped with decent straps instead of bits of clothesline and green hide, but otherwise there was nothing the matter with it as swags go. I've humped that old swag for years, continued the bushman. I've carried that old swag thousands of miles, and as the old dog knows, ain't no one ever bothered about the look of it, or of me, or my old dog either. And do you think I'm going to be ashamed of that old swag for a cabbie or for anyone else? Do you think I'm going to study anybody's feelings? No one ever studied mine. I'm in two minds to summon you for using insulting language towards me. He lifted the swag by the twisted towel, which served as a shoulder strap, and swung it into the cab, got in himself and hauled the dog after him. You can drive me somewhere where I can leave my swag and dog while I get some decent clothes and see a t to see a tailor in. He said to the cabman, my old dog ain't used to cabs, you see. Then he added reflectively, I drove a cab myself once for five years in Sydney.